If your car has a drinking problem, a destructive, toxic relationship with engine oil, and the manufacturer is brushing you off as that car churns and burns oil between services, I get it. Plenty of people complain to me about this. Here are the facts. Welcome to another episode of What the Fact, a logical enough extension of my ongoing jihad on bullshit. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Now look, there's nothing I enjoy more than the repetitive application of lubricant. <laughs> Maintenance is so important. What the hell are you doing here? It's not Friday. Can't you go and hang with the chicks? You whisper the word lubricant, and he's on it, like Oprah on a baked ham. <laughs> Frankly, every year I get several hundred complaints by email about alleged excessive oil consumption in cars, new cars, often in relation to Audis, generally, Holden Colorado specifically, and Subarus, generally. Luke's question to me on this is pretty typical, and I'm just picking on him because it's the most recent, and he's literate. <laughs> he uses sentences and everything, which is not always the case. I have a 2014 Holden Colorado with 67,000 kilometres on the clock. I've owned it since new, and it is using two litres of oil between 15,000 kilometre services. Car has been fully serviced. Holden has replaced the dipstick and continued to monitor it for a year and have now put 5W40 in it at the last service, but it hasn't helped. I have recently been told in writing by my local Holden dealer that, quote, anything below 2.5 litres per 10,000 kilometres is considered acceptable, and additional top-ups between services are not uncommon. Is this reasonable? To do this question justice, we need to do a crash course in engine design basics, in particular the past versus the present. In the past, engines were built really tight and they consumed essentially no oil for years if you maintain them properly. Then, inevitably, wear would overcome them and the piston rings and or the valve guides would kind of give up the ghost. After something like 150,000 kilometres or more, whatever, mechanical wear would just take over. It would blow out those clearances, and as a consequence, a great deal of engine oil would burn. And every takeoff at the lights would make you look like the Batmobile in smokescreen mode. Wear would then accelerate out of control, and your engine would essentially be a dead man walking. And then, about a decade ago, maybe 15 years, manufacturers started to get really serious about fuel consumption. And when you want to do that, there are basically three ways to tackle it. The easiest way is just to make the cars lighter. But since that also makes them typically smaller and less brimming with the kind of cool toys you expect, manufacturers are disinclined to do that. So cars keep getting bigger and heavier, and there's not a great deal we'll be doing about that anytime soon. The second way is to improve combustion efficiency, which is what variable valve timing, direct injection, variable geometry, turbocharging, etc. All the cool engineering toys, that's what that's all about. Burning the same amount of fuel and extracting more useful work from each drop. And the last way, and in many ways the most accessible way to make real efficiency gains, is to tackle resistance. Things like aerodynamics, rolling resistance, and internal friction. Losses. These are the things you can't feel, but which your engine needs to battle through every rev, just to get your car out of the blocks and moving. Internal friction in your engine is one of those big ticket losses items. So in an effort to reduce fuel consumption, manufacturers have for several years now waged a war on internal friction in engines and they've wound back the tension in piston rings and valve guides in particular. And that saves fuel and it saves you money. Let's not forget that while you're out there bitching about oil consumption. You're saving money on fuel here. 
But it also opens the door to that oil consumption. And this understandably sets off the warning bells in some owners' minds, at least. This oil consumption is a feedback effect. Looser piston rings and valve guides slide easier, but they allow some oil to be burnt. Classic example of an overall positive change also generating negative feedback. At the risk of sounding like Morpheus, feedback is everywhere. It is all around you. When you go to work, when you pay your taxes, and when you help your landlady carry out her garbage. I think that was actually Agent Smith who said that. Anywho, feedback is the reflective effect of changing a system. It can be positive or negative, expected or a complete shock. And in this case, it is entirely expected and also negative. It's like this. If you are caught pumping up the boss's secretary because, I don't know, maybe she keeps going down on you and nobody likes a pneumatically deficient PA, such a tragedy, then the primary change to your system here is all the enjoyable recreational third-party inflation and the feedback effect is being kicked out of the family home and seeing your kids every second weekend for the next 15 years, if you're lucky. So the feedback here is oil consumption off the back of reduced friction, which is positive. But this oil consumption is not like the 1980 engine Batmobile smokescreen engine pooping itself oil consumption problem, it's not indicative of early wear or a defect unless the consumption rate increases substantially. It's kind of just how your engine rolls. Frankly, I don't believe it's that much of an imposition actually to tip in one litre of engine oil every six months, which for ordinary drivers is about seven and a half thousand kilometres, especially since whatever the oil's costing you, you saved more money in fuel than that. But manufacturers are very bad at communicating this because any way they sex it up, it would turn some subset of potential buyers away. If a manufacturer alerts you to the potential oil burning effect pre-purchase, some potential owners will simply run. So they talk up the fuel efficiency and shut up about oil consumption. Frankly, many manufacturers are also fairly crap at the implementation of expected oil consumption too, and dealerships are often really bad at the hands-on aspects with confused customers. In R&D, they should be smart enough to build additional sump capacity into the engine so that, say... A design limit of two litres of in-service oil consumption does not take the dipstick from the full mark to below the ad mark in between services. They need to make this a non-issue for actual car owners. This would be a robust, responsible way to deal with this issue. If they did that, for most owners, it would become a non-issue overnight. But as things stand, it's nuts to impose this mid-service interval add oil responsibility on owners, and yet it appears to be a standard operating procedure for some car companies. There's also something intrinsically shifty about the entire awareness and communications process. It's almost as if they've become so adept at bullshitting you that they use bullshit even when complete honesty would serve everyone better. And the feedback for them ultimately is customer dissatisfaction blowback, often to the extent that the customer never buys that brand again. So pissed off, are they? And so easy to fix. So my advice to you, if your engine has this thirst for oil, is this. Get your concerns on record with the manufacturer in writing. In case there's a problem and it needs resolving after the warranty expires, you'll have the records. Check your oil regularly, not that hard to do, and a pretty good idea once a week. Remember that oil consumption is generally not a problem, especially if the rate of that consumption is not accelerating. If it's one litre every 10,000 kilometres or whatever, then that's a relatively good sign, if it's repeatable. And remember that while you're bitching over the service counter about this alleged drinking problem, it's also actually saving you cash. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this helps, and thanks for watching.